What's up YouTubers and Cobra fans and welcome to Cobra Convergence 7. A very special thank you to HCC788 for not only the invitation but for gathering YouTubers from around the globe in this month-long Cobra celebration. And what better way to start off Convergence than looking at the Mecca of Cobra headquarters. The place where Serpenta puts his feet up and yet another location where poor old Cobra Commander gets insulted. Our most dangerous enemy is not G.I. Joe, but your collective incompetence! Hogwash! The terrifying 1986 Cobra Terradrome. Well, I guess it's kind of terrifying. Oh, I'd say they all know that, and it doesn't frighten them in the least! Now, before the Terror Drone was released, Cobra did have a couple of other bases to speak of. The first initial base was the Sears and Roebuck 1982 Missile Command Center. This was a cardboard type base, which is actually pretty rare to acquire complete these days. And then there were some mini bases, like the 1985 Cobra Bunker. And then they had the Surveillance Port, which was actually released in 1986. This could be used for a rallying point for the Cobra troops. The Terradrome was first sighted in comic book issue number 45, but it was referred to as the launch base. It wasn't until issue 54 where it was actually called the Terradrome. Its first cartoon appearance was in the miniseries Arise Serpenter Arise, in the very first part. Also appearing in the opening animation for the Sunbow series, which, unfortunately, it gets destroyed. And of course, we can't forget it in the animated G.I. Joe movie. And as a kid, I always found it strange how in all the different media, the Terradrome was depicted in all different sizes. And lastly, in the Marvel comic commercial, it shows the revolving top floor, which unfortunately never made it to the final product. With a base this massive, the playability is only limited to your imagination. The exposed top floor is where all the action happens. Embosed Cobra symbols on the ramparts, two main cannons, the launch silo, four seats, six computer panels, as well as two mechanical panels. The elevated floor gives Cobra the advantage over the enemy on the ground. Hello! Hello! Okay, let's jump into it and take a closer look at what this Cobra base of operations has to offer. First up, there's six of these reinforced heavy armor Cobra battle ramparts that surround the top floor. And as you can see, the Cobra symbol here is nice and thick and raised off the rampart. I really like how this is sticking off the rampart in this fashion and not just a big sticker like what's on the actual dome in the center of the Terradrome. And they are all molded in the Cobra blue plastic. Really great detail up here, and there's absolutely no mistaking that this is a Cobra base. As we spin the tower around, you'll see that there's a pair of these Ray Dome reinforced cannon towers. The top cannon portion is molded in a black plastic, which is a nice touch. These things are articulated. They do rotate 360 degrees all the way around. The tower mounted white heat laser cannons do go up and down in this fashion. There's one more detail on these cannon towers that the blueprints are calling out. These are the perimeter defense sensor scanners. These are a great detail and I really like how there's a peekaboo pillbox underneath the gun tower but unfortunately that's not usable. Starting on the interior of the Terradrome, you'll notice that there's two of these launch preparation workstations. One here, and there's one located right over here. As I zoom in, this gives you an opportunity to see all the great molded-in details. From the computer screen sticker on the front, the molded-in keyboard buttons along the top rail. So there's plenty of things to do at this workstation for the Cobra Troops. As I spin the terror drum around, you'll notice that there's two of these 
filler electrical type panels located up here on the upper deck. There's one located right here, and there's another one located right over there. And again, I'll try to zoom in on these just so you can get a good look at all the molded in details. As you can see, all the fantastic molded in detail on these pit. Hey, Cooper, what are you doing on that panel over there? Oh man, can somebody call a Techno Viper, please? Uh, yeah, moving right along. There's also four of these fire control guidance monitors located around the top of the perimeter which could be used for security reasons, too. Now, surrounding the entire perimeter of the upper level here is a bunch of these vents all over the floor. And according to the blueprints, these are called the Launch Silo Thermal Thrust Vents. For the final feature on the top floor, right in the center, you'll see that blue dome with a nice red Cobra insignia on it. Here you'll see eight of these launch silo blast doors, and inside, this is where the actual fire bat launches from. As we venture down to level one, you'll see that there's eight of these heavily armored blast doors surrounding the perimeter. I have to a review here. Jeez, no respect. Anyways, two of these actually have blast door mounted dual laser cannons. And of course, these are used to fend off those incoming Joe attacks. The first chamber we're going to take a look at is this one right here, which is clearly marked by a molded in arrow. And as we open up the door, what you'll see is the launch silo activation lever. Now this red handle right here is what activates the fire bat. Basically you just grab it, pull it down till it locks, and we'll look up top, and the fire bat comes up out of the silo. Behind the second chamber door, the blueprints are calling this the munitions storage depot. And essentially, this is the only empty chamber on the first floor. So basically, I just put a locker and a chair in there for the Cobra troops to hang out in. Moving right along, as I spin this around to the front, you're going to notice that this is one of the two blast door mounted laser cannons. These are articulated, they go up and down. And these doors actually swing open in this fashion. And of course, these chairs are designed for the vintage Cobra figures. Right now, I have a modern figure in here, and as you can see, he's not doing too well. The back hole pegs, of course, are a different size. And right here, you'll notice this orange bar, which is actually a kickstand. And these are meant to drop straight down like this if this was sitting flat on a table. And it helps prevent the door from closing. Now, these are incredibly fragile, so please be aware not to break them off. down to the next door this is one of three identical chambers but the blueprints are actually calling this chamber the vehicle diagnostic analysis service bay and in each one of these bays they all have this orange tray that slides out like this and stops and you'll notice that there's an actual refueling pump with a nozzle on it now this nozzle is exactly like the nozzle on the USS flag except in a red color so basically what these do is, let me grab a vehicle here, I'll grab the Cobra Ferret because this is a great example, and as you'll notice right here there's a hole for a faux gas tank, and basically you grab the gas nozzle, and this is meant to pop in here like this, and now you can pretend you're fueling up your Cobra vehicles. The next bay, as I stated earlier, earlier, it's absolutely identical to the previous chamber we just looked at. And for the third and final garage type bay, the blueprints are actually calling this bay the refueling energizing station. 
And this is absolutely identical to the previous two. And with Cobra's reputation of losing their vehicles in a firefight with the Joes, this gives them three bays to repair their entire fleet. And for this next chamber, just like the 1983 G.I. Joe Headquarters Command Center, the Terradrome also has a jail cell. And it looks like good old Duke is captured yet again. That doesn't make any sense. And for the final bay of the Terradrome, you can see the second blast door mounted laser cannon. Again, this is articulated just like the previous one. And now this time, this door actually opens in this direction. And this one's a little fiddly to get open. Now this modern Cobra Trooper is actually doing a better job of sitting in the seat. And here's the other kickstand. And as you can see, mine don't walk in the opposition. They just won out from years of play. And if you weren't aware, something interesting about the molding of these doors. Now this tip was brought to my attention over 10 years ago from Kevin, otherwise known as FormBX257. He took his claws and actually mounted them on these doors. Let me grab another one here. I'll stick this one on. Now this wasn't really designed for this, but I found it interesting that he did this in his video so long ago. Now most collectors, they do know this tip, but I just figured I'd throw a shout out to good old Kevin and put it in my video. The Terradrome also came with a figure. And this figure here is called the AVAC, which stands for the Air Viper Advanced Class. And I'll put the file card up on the screen, so feel free to pause the video and read that if you like. All right, let's take a nice close look at all the wonderful details of this figure. And right off the bat, you can see the G.I. Joe silver they used. There's the Cobra insignia right there on his chest. Really interesting looking helmet he has. I, I really like the red, chrome, and black accents. Here's a quick look at the back side of the figure. Now looking at his left thigh, you can see there's a molded in holster with a pistol, which is of course not removable. Now for the articulation of this figure, it's just like all the other 86 figures with the additional right and left of the head and of course the up and down. And as you can see, my head is a little loose. One thing to note, the silver paint on these figures are really easily scratched off, so just take care when handling him. Now this figure did come with one accessory, and here you can see the actual black parachute pack. There's a nice raised Cobra insignia right there on the pack. This is made out of a nice rubbery pliable plastic, which of course goes over the figure's head and of course then just claps like a belt. I find that if you try to put the parachute on the figure and get him in the fire bat, it is a little cramped and um, I just tend to leave my parachute pack off the figure. Now this figure was re-released in the modern form. He was part of the 25th anniversary line and here he is right now. We'll slide him next to him so we can do some comparing. And as with most 25th anniversary release figures, they really did try to capture all the great detail of their vintage counterparts. The maroon jumpsuit is pretty close to the original. Of course, all the silver highlights. Of course, he does have the Cobra logo right there on his chest. He did not come with a parachute pack, but he did come with this knife for his accessory. And here you can see the sheath on his leg. So not only did they do a good job matching the maroon color and of course the silver, the helmet is pretty spot on as well. And of course, with these modern figures, you get way more articulation. Now the AVAC made his first comic book appearance in issue number 54 of the original Marvel run. And he made his first cartoon appearance in the Sunbow episode, Phantom Brigade. Now let's move on to the fire bat that actually came with the Terradrome. Now this actually has quite the interesting history. It actually makes its first cartoon appearance in the Synthoid Conspiracy Part 2 of the Sunbow run. And oddly enough, it was in a light blue color, which was pretty consistent all the way up into 1986's release of Arise Serpenter Arise Part 3, where the fire bat was actually in the red toy color. And for its first comic book appearance, it wasn't until Marvel's issue 46 where there it makes a nice big splash on the page. Now going over the details of the fire bat, the blueprints are calling the nose cone the fire control radar. Now right in here, 
I'm missing a label, which is actually the infrared HUD or heads-up display imaging. Now, if I tip the fire vat up, right here on top, the blueprints are calling that the air induction vents. Now, just like most GI Joe vehicles, the engine covers are removable. And there's one on either side, and according to the blueprints, these are called the epoxy composite engine covers. Now, with that engine cover removed, you can see the silver F404 afterburning turbojet engine. And if we spin it around the back, here you can see the thruster on the rear. And of course, you can see both the rear wings with that really interesting Cobra Air Force sticker on it. Now I'm going to attempt to put the engine cover back on, and my big fat fingers are it's a little fiddly to do this. And let me get the snap in place. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to tip it up. And according to the blueprints, right here, these are called the internal jet fuel tanks. And you can see there's one on either wing. Now let me get this back to the horizontal position. And according to the blueprints, these are called the vertical stabilizer winglets. And these are actually articulated. They go up and down. And that's also helpful when you're trying to get it into the actual silo of the pterodrome. Now if I open up the canopy, we'll take a look at the inside of the cockpit. Really great detail molded on the floor and the texture of the actual seat. It actually has a targeting dashboard. And like I said earlier, it is a little cramped in there trying to get the AVAC pilot in there with this parachute on. Now the wheels on the Fibat are actually molded in a solid black plastic. These are stationary, they don't articulate or roll in any fashion. And the blueprints are calling those the vertical landing strut wheel assemblies. This little jet's armed to the teeth. Right here you can see the 25mm twin coaxial firing cannons. And it also comes with six bombs. Four small ones here, and two larger ones closer to the center. Now when I was a kid, I always thought that these were missiles. But these are actually called High Drag MK-38 Snake Eye Guidance Bombs. Now for the four smaller bombs, these are actually called Anna Surface Condor Bombs. And these don't have as much detail as their two larger counterparts. And all these bombs easily snap onto the Firebat with that dumbbell system, just like that. Now, just like the 25th anniversary figure, the Firebat did get re-released in the 25th anniversary line. And I'll grab that right now. And ironically enough, the color of this 25th anniversary Firebat is remarkably close to the mail-in version you used to be able to get back in the day in that lighter red color. Now I can't be sure, but it looks like they used the same identical mold for both of these. The glaring difference is the windshield on this one is clear. And right here on the windshield, I'll tip it up, that's the missing heads-up display sticker on my vintage Firebat. Now looking at the belly of this tiny little beast, you'll notice it has six bombs just like the original, four small ones and the two large ones, as well as the laser cannons. Now the 25th anniversary Firebat was released in 2008, and in 2009, they actually re-released this. It was a bit modified, and this was part of the Rise of Cobra movie line. They renamed it the Skysweeper, and now it's actually part of the G.I. Joe Air Force. And ironically enough, as you can see, it's in that lightest blue-gray color, as it was in its first cartoon appearance. Then in 2016, they took the Skysweeper, released it at the convention, Vac Chrome metaled it, and made a part of the Sky Patrol. I forgot to mention the 25th anniversary Firebat did come with the figure. In my Joe verse when I was a kid, I always thought of this jet to be a small, fast, agile, formidable foe to the Joe Air Force. Virtually uncatchable. Now in the animated series, it was in a few dogfights with the Conquest, and I get it, that's a small, fast jet too, and it lost every single time. But I wonder how it would have fared against the Sky Striker.
Destro here. We've got the Joes right where you want them, sir. If Cobra's got all the cards, let's deal ourselves a new hand. I'm heading in. <laughs> Will you look at that? I'm gonna try to beat the odds. Holy Toledo! Time to reshuffle this deck. I thought I smelled something. Target locked. Uh oh, I've got a bogey. Third Sky Striker this month. Duke's not gonna be pleased. Fireback One to Squadron, returning to base and getting low on fuel. Well, that looks like that answers my question. The Firebats not to be messed with. Alright, this is going to wrap up my review of the 1986 G.I. Joe Cobra Terror Drone. I really like to thank you guys for watching, and if you like what you see, join the community. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell for future notification of upcoming videos. And most importantly, I always help a fellow collector out and share your knowledge. Yo, Joe! Uh, I mean, Cobra!